Welcome to this video everybody and today I'm going to be concentrating on some simple macro photography making the most of these fantastic autumn colours. So I've got my main lens today is the 100mm macro lens and that's the one that I'm hoping to use the most try and do some nice autumn macro shots. I'm looking at a really simple shot now um, and one of the reasons I've picked this is because it's not going to be affected by the wind at all. I am absolutely loving the lighting on this at the moment, I didn't expect that and that's because I'm getting kind of a mixture of light so we've got clouds coming through and some quite big patches of blue sky as well which I didn't really want. Um, but quite often if you photograph in the shade under the blue sky you can get a really nice effect especially if it's kind of partial lighting. I've kind of got two different plants going up and I'm trying to position the camera to get it right in the middle as flat as possible for, to, to maximise depth of field. Down to ISO 100 for really good quality, f11 again good quality, maximise depth of field. At this distance I could probably use f8 but I'm on f11, that gives me a shutter speed about one eighth of a second. The light's changing a bit um, but it's about that. And then I've just played around with the compositions. Um, a little bit. I can kind of do one that's bringing more of the yellow leaves at the bottom which seems to work pretty well um, and then another one which is just the the most simple composition that I wanted to go for originally and that's just to get kind of both both plants both patches uh, without anything else really distracting around it and also you've kind of got the um, like the the stems we call them stems kind of creeping off to the side and I'm trying to include that in the shot as well. I don't want to make it too tight. I want to kind of include those arms that are going out to the side. You can see just how different the light is in the shades outside because the camera can't control the contrast. It's too much contrast. What I'm going to do, I'm just looking at this as a vertical. And you should always do that, try and look at horizontal and vertical to see if one works better than the other. Um, so I'm going to try this in a vertical as well, which is where the good old L bracket comes in, which I finally got these days. But that means I need to get the tripod a little higher because when you turn it round, you're usually a bit lower usually. Yeah, really liking the vertical composition as well. I'm not too sure which one I prefer. I can decide that later, it's not a problem. Uh, I've just done, I think, two different versions of the vertical. Again, one uh, to include more of the bottom yellow leaves at the bottom of the frame and then one uh, just to try and exclude that as slightly tighter but the light looks fantastic no filters just using the light as it is no filters I'm a big fan of keeping it really simple at first when you're starting and that's because it just takes a little bit of time um, sometimes for your brain to kind of get into gear and then you get more into the flow so first of all it's good if you just keep it really simple. It's very very changeable weather typical for autumn and that's causing a problem when the sun's coming out uh, so what I'm trying to do is stay in the shade of the house behind me so if you see like the sun is just kind of popping over so if I stay in the shade of the house then I don't have any problems with the sun. I'm looking at all the Cotone Aster berries, the colour just looks fantastic, there's a huge clump of those here, um, but I'm, I'm struggling to find an image. Mm -hmm. 
I've been looking for ages trying to find a good composition and it's never easy. It's one thing to have good light and really nice colour, it's another to find a really strong composition. It's never easy, it takes time. But what I have found here is looking pretty good. Again, it's really simple, uh, kind of got like the main, the main stem and then sort of leaves and berries which kind of look like they're coming off either side, um, fairly symmetrical. Now I can't shoot from here, I've got to kind of get over here to get the camera flat uh, parallel to what I'm photographing so I've kind of got to be out here, I can't go any further because I'll end up trampling stuff which I definitely don't want to do so it might be a bit awkward with the tripod. That has driven me absolutely insane. So I did a test shot first, just on a higher ISO or the higher shutter speed to check the composition. I did a test shot and I looked at it and I thought that looks beautiful, absolutely happy with that. Then got the tripod in roughly in the right area and then it's taken me probably 15 minutes um, to get, I just, I just couldn't get the same composition. It was just ridiculous. It took me about 15 minutes to get the tripod to figure out where it needed to be to get the same composition. But, and I still haven't got it exactly. The test shot was perfect, but I couldn't seem to recreate it. It's just one of those things. Um, but it's very, very close. So finally managed to get the tripod into position, even though I don't think it's quite perfect. Got the camera nice and flat now. Uh, it's pretty good parallel for depth of field for most of the berries. Um, I've gone down to f8 because the wind's got up a bit, so I'm a bit worried about the shutter speed. So I've got f8. Uh, ISO 400, that's giving me a shutter speed of 13th, 1 13th of a second, which is just a bit faster. Because the wind has just got up so much, it's horrific. It's like blowing a gale out there. Um, I'm just trying to stay as close to the house as I can to be more sheltered, which has actually brought me back to the original place where I started, but for a very different picture. Something that caught my eye earlier on these, um, I think this is hydrangea hydra still, which is what was going up the wall. But there is some really lovely, I think it's the just old flower heads uh, that are now turned brown and they're a really nice pattern and there's also some seed heads in there as well gorgeous yellow colours around it so I'm going to try and concentrate on that as a close-up as a macro shot the difficulty is even here it is more sheltered but I've still got a chance of some wind coming in causing problems so I might have to uh, might have to employ a little bit of help not not a person but a little thing what? So that took a little bit of time to find something. Um, my first shot is going to be just down here. Um, so I've got really nice petals and then it's just kind of sticking out from where the seed heads are. So you've got like that, uh, the, the petals of the old flower and then the seed heads as well, which is like two very contrasting patterns and different colors as well. Background's going to be, should be just completely yellow, nice and diffused. <laughs> It's too windy, I just I need some help because it's just moving too much. So I'm going to use this, which is called a plamp, which some of you might have seen, and it just enables you to stabilise basically what you're photographing, in this case a plant. Uh, I'm going to hook this onto the tripod and then this end is like a, a bit of a clip. I'm going to just going to clip that onto the branch and that'll ho hopefully keep everything more steady, allow me to get a sharper picture more easily. I've actually put a bit of sponge on the end here, um, just because I thought if it's softer then it's less likely to damage things when you attach it. Um, I don't advise trying to do this kind of photography in this kind of weather, I thought I'd give it a go today. But it's still getting movement. So I'm just having to wait long enough for a lull in the wind and just keep taking shots. This is just, this is just so, this is just so frustrating. Uh, there's just so much movement and there's not much I can do. So I tried some on 1 80th of a second, like the previous image. It's gone still. 
quick. Well, you, you think it was still, but it's about as still as it's going to get, I think. So I'm going to put the ISO up. I'm going to go to uh, one, two, three, 1600. ISO 1600, I've now got 160th of a second. So I've basically doubled everything, doubled the shutter speed, more chance of stopping the movement. I think I'm just gonna give up on this, still. The wind is just too bad, it's just ridiculous, uh, so I'm going to give this up now, just not the best conditions. There's some fantastic stuff there, the colours, like the yellow colours just look really gorgeous and the patterns I was photographing, I really like that, so there's a lot in there, uh, but it's just too windy to get sharp images. Um, if you enjoyed that video then you might enjoy this video which is more autumn macro photography. If you're not subscribed, do cons consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks very much for watching, I'll see you next time.